I can't explain it. Okay. <laughs> um, now, birds, we've been talking about birds, abominations, variations on the bird form. And I thought, why not lighten the mood a little bit by <clears throat> making light of abominations in the bird form. I used to work on the railway um, a long time ago. <clears throat> I'm just going to have another little swallow of Guinness just to um, replace some of the molecules that have been. have been lost during that performance. This uh, drama takes its toll on your physical being. William Shatner is a wreck inside. <laughs> the, the, the ultrasounds would bring tears to your eyes. They would. Now, I was, um, I was on the railway. Oh, yeah, I was. That no, was me. I was on the railway and I was in, um, in a track maintenance gang and one of our jobs was to uh, replace a signal. We'd become a human signal, uh, stopping trains with a flag or a, or a lamp, whether it was, depending whether it was night or day. But the gaps between trains, you know, got very long. Um, to save myself getting bored, I carried a needle and thread around in my pocket and I'd fed it around the trackside uh, flotsam to, um, to find bits and pieces that I could stitch together into bird effigies. Because there were lots of tiny little bones, lots of pheasants around in that area. And they used to get killed on the track. And there was, the, the track was, had a fine dusting, a carpet of these tiny bones. And I used to include these tiny bones in these avian puppets. And according to magical thinking, um, it invested them with life, you see. And, and they would whisper things in my ear if I placed them on the branch of a tree that I'd made from wire and um, fronds of fir trees that uh, were scattered around the trackside. And I put them in the tree and they'd whisper things to me about all the wonderful things happening in the world and the not so wonderful things. <clears throat> and this song is um, about that, uh, generally. It's called um, I Stitch Together A Tiny Birds. A veil of gloomy waters, sunken with rough holes, washes through my fingers and toes. Washes clean the ceiling space of only crumpled graphite, washes clean away my diesel leak. And I stitch together tiny birds from trinkets, corn and flotsam, from castaway humbugs, I find a bumper railway. Then I stitch these tiny birds into a whiskey window tree, so they might whisper many things into me. Out in crouching shelters, dawn to dog's only, and the cats of log family is sleeping. I hear that they've been digging deep into the earth to upset the quiet people there. And I stitch to the tiny birds from drinkies, bar and flotsam, from castaway and bags I find upon the railway. And I stitch these tiny birds into the whiskey window tree So they might whisper many things into me oh, 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 oh. Now, my leafy mitten hand flows nearer to my heart And I make a little Sound. Everything is sliding into the ditches today. Sunshine still leaves out among the reeds. And now upon 
An endless aching spell of mid-October A cold-smelling world of mushroom gills Did you get a little bit of melisma there? Twist me bed clothes. I'll see if I can do it again. Under night, sweet things. Here we go. Of dust, and I know the mischief perch. See that? Uh, upon the stair. And I stitch together the tiny birds with trinkets, farm and flocks and in castaway handbags. I find upon the railway the mastics these tiny birds into a whiskey window tree. Till they might whisper many things into the ear. Till they might whisper, till they might whisper, till they might whisper many things into the ear. Oh, 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 Counting on it, 
they're counting on it, you wouldn't want to solve it there. How a bit more less could you? So come away, leave it. Let it climb the trees. Let it simply be. Let it go back to its tree top furrow. Up inside the western woods. Just over which the clouds are detonations of neon the service. And all the treetops differ. They differ, don't they? Like just children in a queue. Here, yeah, leave this one alone, my dog. Okay? Leave it. Yeah, let it be. Sunset melancholy, just for you, the infrasound guest. Barbed wire, in generous absence, offers tonic plasmas for sentimental nerves and an episode of banned in legged freedom is ready for collection upon the splitting of an egg. The waterborne your bedhead is bottomless and blood warm, just like the bog land where the sword metal sleeps, eh? Just like the bog land where the sword metal sleeps. Thread your limbs through units of plastic, I should say not, where green water penetrates. The breakfast room tick-tock. 
looks that are bright angles to time and cools you down bright and early long before the food is hatched in a clearing where the bricks fail to meet other guests fumble spasms of bloke awaiting the red boobs of courage make soapy soliloquies based on fo football and Filipino waves each sorry idiolect a wig of carrion gelled with icor but not you not you are in for sound guess You're not alive then. They are a walrus with a sparrow's heart. They are an engine full of sand. But you, you are twin flutes. Twin flutes around an unpolluted nerve. You are a layer in the shoes of a spyful giant, a mollusk sifting pebbles on the slopes of a drowned hill, a stuffed animal sitting by a flap in a door, oiled with mushroom poisons, greedy for exotic pulp and addictive manures. Manures and pulp, which always feel stolen. Mm, yeah, they need they need to feel stolen from a drawer full of dusty confiscations. But you, not you, I am for sound guest. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. The infrasound guest. Welcome to Bird Lake Hotel. Breakfast is a day. Alan was touched by the water bowman's suggestion, but he knew on the QT 
slapstick. You can't, you can't control slapstick. It's here to teach us humility, isn't it? I'm obviously getting above myself. Um, so, happened to me in Ireland as well, and my braces exploded in a session. Um, you're doing it again. I'm supposed to be supposed to be concentrating on this. Snarge. Did you, uh, you you want to know what snarge was? Yeah. Snarge. Snarge is the residue of bird strike found upon aircraft by ground crew during a post-flight inspection. Along the fuselage and the engines, it's kind of avian chutney. It's a good metaphor uh, for the individual who's like the bird in flight, isn't it? Happenstance, misadventure and slapstick of a large commercial aircraft about to trespass upon his flight path and then splat. He's snarching. Any physicist will tell you that the only way for a bird to survive such a collision on the arm is to make itself so infinitesimally small that it passes through the atoms of the oncoming object with room to spare. According to uh, solipsism and pataphysics, the two codes by which I live, um, I have the power to shrink objects thusly using my word poems, as you've heard tonight, music tunes and art pictures, um, combined in a very specific way. As yet, I've not mastered the ratios, uh, but as a father, I'm determined to find that ideal combination and sing my son to the safety of small. Balanced on the tips of their tongues. Oh, let my kind washers glove sing you to the safety of small. Let my lullabies plump the little zephyrs bandaging your skulls. He's, he's, he's under no doubt a 
was a mean one, but... <clears throat> now... I need to thank you for this one. I've got one. Let's see what that one's got. Um, bye! 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 He must look on aghast as lumpen silhouettes fall from the stricken aeroplane, now dropping out of the sky like a steeplejack's hammer. Golden rifle once sang. In the early morning rain, my head is fat, my heart is soft. I wave a fond goodbye to aeroplanes With a hanky held aloft Bye Bye Bye
days when everything was better. I seem to remember that in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, motor vehicles did not emit pollutants. No, they, they simply flavoured the air with uh, smoky vanilla. Their engines did not make noise, rather they provided a musical counterpoint to the march wind. Or sang lullabies to calm the hectic buffaloes overhead. Our car was a travelling room that made, made it safe to cross the rubble and enabled us to penetrate the countryside during seasons normally lost to sleep. It sheltered us from shockwaves, truant from the ventricles of an earthquake, and held the minty dentures of a seaboard sky in its mirrors. And life could be lived to the full. Life could be lived to the full inside that little car. It was our indoor allotment of magic. into being a magic car glitter. Can we go back actually, Matt? Um, because uh, we need to get this louder, I think. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I... Um... Sorry about that, folks. There's no point in hiding anything, is there? <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's, it's not your fault. Come off. Yeah. Oh, great. Can I just say I was a teenage crop shop? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a feedback? No. Oh. Hey, excellent, happy fool. The waves in a car into being. A magic car, glitter pocked with ordinary wonder. A magic car powered by the muscular vapors, the muscular vapors of humdrum, humdrum behind a pen of ice, friend in humdrum rubber, our roving parlays, both mortuary and tub of crest, both ladies shoe and sawdust hutch, mowing through the junction fluster, flee all the colours of home. The rubber matting here within is a grid of printed shoe soil, buttonholed with minimalist, flat as petrol spill. Yes, flat as spill petrol on the floor of Conan's tent. Brittle as a glass high potter use, that's our car. Of the ears of paper spaniels veined in haywares of ink, where anatomies of forest, reservoir, and tumulus mosaic the gaps between the moon trickle town. A pimple doctor made of vowels shut inside the radio betokens pink hormones with. We suspect a wink, so let's drive away from winter's monotony, shall we? Into the shadowless abstractions of his clinic.
and I'm full skipping goofy with Italian wire and carrion grub and mollusks in nature's sultry sleep dark and mollusks in nature's sultry sleep dark. Along more clings to the verge. 
vertical horizon, the product of a bungled somersault. And so I come back from my far away place. Oh, you like okay. To laugh like an uncle, yeah. never a dad. Cambridge, 
Um, there were a number of uh, village elders who were clamouring for appointment to a position of prominence on the parish council. And um, several characters. The vicar was one of them. He was a depressive vicar and he used to bar himself up in his room at Easter time. <coughs> he was that disappointed when he heard the Easter story and um, he wouldn't come out. He wouldn't come out. He was sulky. Um, and there was the, 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 the retired headmistress. She was a pillar of the Baptist church, which is, um, she was retired from a local primary school. And um, if you gave her booze, you'd find her at midnight pruning roses in a nighty. But, I mean, that, that sounds quite remarkable as it is, but they weren't her roses. And it wasn't her night. <laughs> um, so, and the, the, the guy who really, really, really took the biscuit was uh, Les Wellbeloved, the local um, uh, postmaster, um, who had such a sense of entitlement that he just let himself into your house with it unbidden, you know, he wouldn't bother knocking, he'd just walk in the back door. And anything could be going on, you know, any sort of personal, personal um, scene could be playing out. And I, I remember once he burst in, and my grandma, my grandma was uh, giving birth to this baby called Beryl on the, <laughs> on, the, on the on the kitchen table, you know. I was um, and Les, Les, Les bursts in, he sits down. Sits down, takes a stool from the breakfast bar, helps himself to a yakult from the fridge. And he's, and he, and he's, he's sat there and he's waving these salad tongs, saying, Get it out with this, get it out with this. And he's like, no. <laughs> Absolutely no help at all. We had to tell him to go into the into the next room or watch a Wi Fi, though, until, you know, everything was, you know, the child was safe. Um, and a couple of weeks later, he does the same thing again. Because we had the vicar around. It wasn't Easter. This was uh, Easter was long gone. I think he was. Um, I think he was set to a Jessima. Anyway, it, um, <laughs> the vicar came round and um, he says, um, oh, "Oh yeah." And he was trying. The vicar was conducting an exorcism on Loxley, who was my brother's rabbit, um, <laughs> to try, try and stop it hypnotising people. And um, so. Um, <clears throat> just as just as the uh, ceremony was just reaching the climax, so, um, you know the vicar was purple in the face and sweat flying everywhere. He said, "You know, leave this rabbit, you foul demon! I command you, you know, uh, stop hypnotising folk and that sort of thing." Um, uh, Les just belches really loudly. You know, he's, just, he's one of these guys that couldn't help but sort of. Um, Enlivening the balance with the word bollocks, you know, it was <laughs> lovely. He, he, he was very good at it. I mean, I'll give him that. He did try. He did. He did start a competition um, along the lines of uh, BBC Saturday Evening Entertainment called Strictly Balance Bollocks, <laughs> <laughs> which took place took place on the uh, on the village green um, for many years. Anyway, yeah. So he did that, but of course it put the vicar off his stride. And the demon went right back in the rabbit, and you know the vicar had to start again. He said, "Well, that was late anyway." Um, so I wrote this. Uh, <coughs> I wrote this song about him. Sniff the rain in hollow of your enormous pillow. It smells like the neck of a buried winter's bottle. Lying low as dead man's bones among the fabricated roots of the wall and shifting of bottle buried fen. Well, good morning, Mr. Well, we look. There 
is no need to knock I see you across the greetings Come from the village of Luz Look closely, Mr. Wellbeam Look at the ladies and books they are into Of the blue Atlantic air From shanties from the pier Shanties from the pier I keep falling between buttons um, and, it, and it causes an unfortunate interval in the songs where I have to stop and explain everything in detail and bore everybody in the shit left. So, um, on with the song and um, any, any more questions if you, if you want to wait until the end, right? Okay. Good morning, Mr. Weldon. There is no need to know. I see you brought a greetings card from the village elders. Look close to Mr. Weldon. The ladies' books they are empty. All got a book of Atlantic hair and shandies from the pier. Shandies from the pier. Oh, oh, oh. La, 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 la.